So welcome again. In this particular session, that is section 4, we are going to discuss wholesale branch system. Now section 4 is again vital section because it deals with wholesale branch system. What exactly the wholesale branch system is in order to make you understand that here I write, suppose there is head office. Correct? If there is head office, there is branch also. So there is branch office also. And then customers. Because these are the three important party or segment around which entire excess of branch accounting revolves. We presume that head office sends goods to branch. Head office sends goods to branch of course at cost plus 100 cost plus 80 percent or let us say at cost plus for simplicity's sake 50 percent what does it means it means if the cost price is 100 then head office will send the goods to the branch at 100 plus 50 that is equal to at the rate of 150 correct and let us say branch is being asked to sell the goods to the customers branch is being asked to sell the goods to the customer at cost plus 100 percent cost plus 100 percent means equal to 200 now the point here is that so far till up to this particular point we haven't noticed something new so how come we will analyze and arrive over the conclusion that this particular question belongs to the category of wholesale branch system under wholesale branch system the the most and the prominent characteristic with which distinguishes the entire wholesale branch system from the other system is that here you would find that head office is also selling the goods to the customer yes that is the most important point so we will see that under wholesale branch in the question we would be given that head office is also doing direct sales to the customer and indirectly through the through the branch so whenever in the question it would be written that head office also does sales to the customer you come to the conclusion that this question is of wholesale branch system now the point here is that first of all you need to understand and acquaint yourself with some terminologies for example this is cost price without an iota of doubt now head office is send, head, sending the goods in this example at cost plus 50 percent to the branch normally we call it at invoice price but here instead of calling it at invoice price we will call it wholesale price so 150 which is similar and synonymous to invoice price actually is wholesale price correct and of course branch will sell the goods to the customer at cost plus hundred percent this will be known as your list price now the most significant part is that as i told you head office will sell to the customer now here you need to understand that head office may sell to the customer at wholesale price which is 150 or at list price head office can sell the goods to the customer either at wholesale price or at what we call list price now if the question is silent at what price head office is incurring the sales to the customer always presume them to be at wholesale price correct so now at least one thing you know how you are going to distinguish the question whether it falls in the category of wholesale branch system or not what clue did i give you the clue is that under such question you would find that head office is also doing sales to the customers directly now what we are supposed to do as far as accounting is concerned we pick up question number 4.12 elaborate the matter a head office sends goods to branch at cost plus 80 percent goods are being sent to the branch at cost plus 80 percent while the goods are being sold to the customers at cost plus 100 percent correct till up to this particular point should not be any problem but still in order to make you understand better as i have a habit so 4.1 is the question which we are picking up under this question what is happening head office this is your head office cost price for head office is 100 and head office is sending the goods to the branch as it is given in the question at cost price plus 80 percent at cost price plus 80 percent that is 180 so that mean wholesale price in this case is 180 because it is given that head head office sends the goods to branch at this price further it is given goods are sold to the customer so i write here now customers 
I write here now customers. So goods are being sold to the customer. And remember one thing, goods will be sold to sold both by branch and by what we call head office. So even head office is going to sell the goods to customer and even the branch. Goods are sold to customer at cost plus 100%. Cost plus 100%. Cost plus 100% means 200. This will be your list price. So similar to the last question, even under such circumstances that been under wholesale branch system, first of all, we will have to analyze the rates. Analysis of rates. In order to analyze the rates, you will write your cost price. You will write your wholesale price. That is nothing but your invoice price actually, but we will call it wholesale price. List price. We have seen that cost price is 100. Wholesale price is 180. And list price is 200. So, we can also see that difference between cost price and wholesale price is actually 80. And if I am going to apply a rate of 80 by 180, which is equal to actually 4 by 9, because in the denominator there is wholesale price, in the denominator there is wholesale price, correct? So it means this particular rate can be applied only on wholesale price item. And if we are going to apply this rate on an item which is at wholesale price, that will come back to cost price. You must understand the what we call replication of the rates. Second is difference between wholesale price and list price. The difference is 20 by 200 or 1 by 10. In the denominator, we have written list price. Quite obviously, this is rate on list price, can be applied on list price. If you are going to apply on list price, it will come back to wholesale price, 1 by 10. Similarly, you can frame another rate that is difference between cost price and list price. If I will take the difference between the cost price and the list price, that is equal to 100. And if I will apply a rate of 100 by 200 or 1 by 2, because in the denominator there is list price, the list price will come back to cost price. These are the three rates which will play prominent role. Correct? After having analyzed the rates, now let's have a look over the information which is given to us. There are two columns and this is the first time which we are facing such information, correct? But not the last time. We have been given information with respect to head office and branch office. You have been given a stock. Remember one thing, any stock I'm talking about head office. The general rule is that if nothing is written in front of a stock, we always presume it at invoice price. But however, you will be given stock in the column of head office also. So in case of head office, the stock will, will always be presumed at cost price. In case of branch office, it is presumed generally at invoice price if nothing is mentioned. So a stock which is given in the column of head office, it means it is at invoice price. Because it is at cost price. Purchases are always at cost price because it is the head office. Head office might have purchased some goods. Now in the current year, head office has sent the goods at invoice price. So these are the invoice price. Head office has sent the goods to the branch at invoice price, 90,000. Further, you have been given sales and sales are given in the column of the head office and branch office. So that, that means not only branch is incurring the sale, but sales are also being incurred by head office. It means, so that is why this question is of wholesale price. Now you have been given sales at head office. Sales at head office are made at wholesale price basis. So in this question, it is mentioned that head office does the sale at wholesale price. So head office sells the goods at wholesale price, but branch will always sell the goods at list price. Remember one thing, correct? Branch will always sell to the customer at list price. Head office might sell at wholesale price or list price, but branch will always sell at list price. So after acquainting yourself with all the nitty and gritty, what we are supposed to do? Actually, under these questions, we have to prepare head office trading and profit and loss account. In the books of head office, we are supposed to prepare head office trading and profit and loss account. So I will prepare head office. First of all, I will write in the books of head office. 
in the books of head office. See here, in the books of head office. In the books of head office, I am supposed to prepare head office trading and profit and loss account. So, I will write here head office trading and profit and loss account. Head office trading and profit and loss account. In order to prepare head office trading and profit and loss account, I stretch a line I think this much is enough okay so we begin now you presume yourself as if you are the accountant of head office correct you are the accountant of head office and what happens now in this question first item given to us is first we will look into the column of head office only the first item we have been given here opening stock correct What happens? Pen is not working. some problem in the pen is there i'm sorry actually to make you wait anyway so first item happens to be opening stock so first of all you are going to write here opening stock remember one thing trading and profit and loss account is always prepared at cost price correct i hope you know this particular point so opening stock is twenty thousand on the debit side I write 20,000. So far, no problem. Then there are purchases. Again, it should not be a big problem for you. Amount of purchases in the column of the head office is 2 lakhs. So I write here 2 lakhs. Then third item which is given to us is goods sent to branch at invoice price 90,000. Goods sent to branch, I will write towards the credit side. Why I am going to write it towards the credit side, number one. And remember one thing, this item is at invoice price or wholesale price. And just a moment ago, I told you, head office trading and profit and loss account is generally prepared at what we call cost price. But here, I am violating my own words and writing goods sent to branch account without any hitch and hitch that it it is at wholesale price but anyway i will let you know why i have written amount actually is your 90000 so you are going to write here 90000 first of all correct then we have been given that sales by the head office is 270 and we know that sales by head office are actually at wholesale price so head office has done some sales and these sales are at wholesale price. And these sales amount is equal to 2,70,000. Actually, no problem with respect to sales, even though it is at wholesale price, because the reason is that generally we don't take the loading of the sales, isn't it or not? However, to some of you, it might appear a bit awkward because I just told you head office trading and profit and loss account is generally prepared at what we call cost price but here i have written goods sent to branch at ninety thousand. but if you will look more carefully from the perspective of the branch from the perspective of the head office sorry because has head office has sent the goods to the branch 
So head office is presuming that these goods would ultimately be sold. So that is the reason there is no harm in writing these goods here even at wholesale price because ultimately this is nothing but sort of sale from the perspective of the head office because head office has sent the goods to the branch and head office will quite obviously presume that by the end of this particular stipulated period these goods would be sold out and they have also sold their goods now so that is the reason i need not require to do anything as far as this particular items are concerned now the next point which you need to understand is first of all head office is preparing head office trading and profit or loss account now head office quite obviously head office quite obviously will also be interested in will also be interested in finding out the gross and net profit isn't it or not head office will be interested quite obviously So in order to know the amount of gross profit, the first thing what you are supposed to do under this is your working note. Lots of workings need to be done, working note. Under the working note, what you are supposed to find out, first of all, you are supposed to find out closing stock with head office. Closing stock with head office. You have to find out first of all whether there is any closing stock in the hands of the head office or not. In order to find out closing stock with the head office, what, what we are supposed to do? First of all, here I am going to write opening stock. Now, could you let me know what, what is the amount of opening stock with head office? Opening stock with head office is equal to 20,000. Correct? Is equal to 20,000. Isn't it or not? Then could you tell me the amount of purchases Head office had in the beginning 20,000 worth of goods and it purchased 2 lakhs worth of goods. So this is the total value of goods available with the head office. In fact, it will be known as cost of total goods available at cost price. So goods available with head office, goods available. Of course, at cost. 20,000 worth of goods costing were available in the beginning and head office has purchased what we call 2 lakh worth of goods in the current year. So quite obviously and one can easily conclude that head office is having what we call goods to the tune of what we call 2 lakh 20,000. 2 lakh 20,000 at cost price. Now out of these goods, out of these goods, remember one thing, out of these goods, now I am subtracting less. A. Out of these goods, head office has sent some of the goods to the branch and I need to know what is the cost price of those goods. So that is the reason here I am going to write cost of goods, cost of goods sent to branch. I am interested in knowing the cost of the goods sent to branch office. We know that Branch, as far as branch is concerned, head office has sent the goods to the branch at an invoice price or wholesale price of 90,000. It is given in the question. I want to know their cost price. Now, in order to know your cost price, because we are talking about wholesale price and cost price, I will concentrate my eye span over here itself. We have invoice price, we want to convert it to cost price. So I will have to apply this rate 4 by 9. Is it clear to you? I told you at that time when I was analyzing the rates that if I am going to what we call apply this particular rate on an item which is at wholesale price, that particular item will fall back to cost price. Isn't it or not? So that's the reason. 
I will subtract 4 by 9 of 90,000. If I subtract 4 by 9, it will be equal to 40,000. So I may say, out of 2,20,000 worth of goods, which were available at the disposal of the head office, 50,000 worth of goods, 50,000 worth of goods costing, were sent to branch at a wholesale price of 90,000. But importantly, what we come to know is that out of 2,20,000, 50,000 worth of goods have been sent. Correct? Similarly, I will subtract now, cost of sales cost of sales now you know that in this particular question even head office is incurring some sales and wholesale price of sales is wholesale price of sales is 270000 because head office is doing the sale at wholesale price so again you will you will have to convert it to cost price so again you will need rate of 4 by 9 if you will need rate of 4 by 9, it will be equal to 1,20,000. It will be equal to 1,20,000. So, if I will subtract 120 from 270, I will be left up with 1,50,000. So, you must understand that out of 2,20,000 worth of goods having cost, 50,000 worth of goods costing have been sent to branch. That's a different matter at 90,000. And goods costing 1,50,000 out of 2,20,000 have been sold to customer at 2,70,000. But important thing now we come to know is that out of 2,20,000, 50 plus 150, 2,20,000 worth of goods have been either sent out or have been sold out. So we are left up with 20,000 worth of goods. This is your closing stock. This is how you have to find. Lots of workings need to be done under what we call this particular topic. So the first target you have achieved because it is important and imperative for you to know actually the amount of closing stock. I will write with great pen. So closing stock through workings, we have been able to find out 20,000. Because I have been able to find out the closing stock, quite obviously now I am in a position to find out my gross profit also. So, in order to find out my gross profit, it will be equal to 1,60,000. 1,60,000 is my gross profit. This is my gross profit balancing figure. Now, I tell you a very, very significant point, And many people do not know about this. Actually, what is your gross profit? The gross, how can you earn the gross profit? Quite simple, when you will sell the goods more than, uh, more than the cost price, then only you will be able to get the gross profit. Now, I will, I will try to make you understand. See here, generally we don't take the loading of these two items because both these two items are considered as a sort of sales. Generally, we never take the loading of these two items because from the perspective of the head office, both these items have been sold out. But just to make you understand a bit better, Suppose, suppose you need not require to do this in the examination. You have to simply balance it to get your gross profit. But just to make you understand, suppose here if I write load on goods sent to branch account. Suppose we know that these goods are at wholesale price. In order to bring them at cost price, loading will be equal to 4 by 9. So, 4 by 9 of 90,000 will be equal to 40,000. Correct? Will be equal to 40,000. Similarly, loading on sales. Actually, we never write load on sale, but just to make you understand. If I take the loading on sales, because sales are at wholesale price, in order to bring them to cost price, I will take 4 by 9 of 2,70,000. And that will be equal to 1,20,000. So you have noticed that this 1,60,000 worth of gross profit which we are having actually is nothing but it comprises of, we can say now, it comprises of 40,000 worth of loading on goods sent or margin on goods sent and 1,20,000 worth of margin on actual sales. We can say so. Are you getting my point or not? 
In the examination, you need not require to do this. This is just to make you understand. Correct? So, the gross profit which we had is nothing but this is showing the difference between the cost and the margin. But, very important point here is that this is our gross profit, no doubt about that. And I will bring the gross profit to the credit side of lower portion, this which is profit and loss account, gross profit brought down 1,60,000. And as I just told you, this gross profit comprises of 40,000 worth of margin on goods sent and 1,20,000 on actual sales. Now, you know what is the problem? This gross profit would have been also my net profit because in the question no expenses are given. Suppose if in this particular question in the column of head office some expenses would have been written, I would have had written those expenses on the debit side of PL. However, in this question no expenses are written. So logically my gross profit itself would have been my net profit and I would not have done anything else. Then what is the problem? Why I am not recognizing 1,60,000 worth of profit as my net profit? The reason being is that, see here and you will have to understand it very, very carefully. If we have done sale actually, then no problem. Because you must have noticed head office has done sale of 2,70,000. However, the cost of those goods was only uh, 1,50,000. Correct? So that means head office, when it did the actual sales, it earned a profit of 1,20,000 and this profit will be considered as realized profit. This 1,20,000 worth of profit will be considered as realized profit. You need not require to write here anything besides gross profit. It is just for your understanding, which I'm writing here with uh, 40,120 or some other pen, other ink pen. So, this 1,20,000 will be considered as realized profit, no problem. However, can we say with the same certainty that this 40,000 is realized profit? Can we say? No, we can't say. The reason being is that because these goods have been sent to branch. And till the accounting year will come to an end, we cannot say with surety whether this gross profit is realized or not. Yes, it, it will be considered as realized. A branch will be able to sell all the goods which we have sent to them. We have sent to branch 90,000 worth of goods. Remember one thing. And if branch is able to sell all the goods, then quite obviously, this 40,000 margin on 90,000 will be considered as profit realized. Then no problem. But just imagine for a while, if branch is not able to sell all the goods, by the end of the current year, then some of the profit will remain unrealized. What I am trying to make you understand, head office has sent 50,000 worth of goods to the branch at a wholesale price of 90,000. At a wholesale price of 90,000. That is why I am saying that margin or profit on these goods is equal to 40,000. No doubt about that. And we have taken it as gross profit also because we are under an impression that these goods will be sold out. But problem is that we need to have concrete information whether branch has been able to sold out these goods. If branch is able to sell out all these goods, we need not require to do anything. But suppose, out of 90,000 worth of goods which we have sent to branch, just suppose for a while, suppose 9,000 worth of goods are not sold out by the end of the current year. That means branch fails to actually sell all the 90,000 worth of wholesale priced goods. Out of wholesale price of 90,000, let us say branch is able to sell 81,000 worth of goods, but 9,000 worth of goods have remained unsold. Now, because 9,000 worth of goods have remained unsold, so I want to know what is the loading in it. See example, when I took 4 by 9 of 90,000, I got actually 40,000 as the margin profit. So, what is the margin in, in these goods now? I will take 4 by 9 of 9,000 
So it means 4,000 worth of profit is not realized. Because on 90,000 worth of goods, profit is 90,000. So what is the profit element in 9,000? So this 4,000 I cannot consider as realized because 9,000 worth of goods have remained unsold. So that is the reason under your second working, what you are supposed to do now, you need to find out whether any closing stock is there with the branch or not. And you must also know why you are doing that because you want to know whether there is any unrealized profit or not because if there will be any unrealized profit then you will have to debit it to the uh, profit and loss account to find out your true and real profit so again a working note you need to do i already told you in these questions lots of working notes need to be done working note in this working note we are trying to find out closing stock with branch Closing stock with branch. Closing stock with branch office. How to find out closing stock with the branch account? Branch office. That is the most important point. How to find out? See here, it is not a very difficult task to find out closing stock with the branch office. In one column, I have written cost price. In another column, I have written wholesale price. And in the last column, I have written list price. See here. First thing, Kohli, what amount of goods you sent to branch? It was given in the question, head office has sent to branch goods costing. The question is here actually. Goods sent to branch at invoice price was given to you 90,000. So 90,000 worth of goods have been sent by head office. Goods sent to branch. 90,000 and we know that their cost price is also 50,000 because margin included in these goods is 4 by 9 so 40,000 is margin so 50,000 is the cost now I will have to look into the column of the branch so far the column of branch hasn't played any critical role as far as question is concerned total sales by branch is 90,000 and we should not let and we should not let it skip out of our mind that branch does the sales only at list price. Because in the column of branch it is written 90,000, that means sales by branch is 90,000. So some of you might be tempted to think that because we have sent 90,000 worth of goods and branch have sold out 90,000 worth of goods, so no closing stock is with the branch. But don't again let it skip out of your memory. Branch does the sale at list price and you are sending the goods to the branch at wholesale price. Actually, due to some or other reason, I want to know the wholesale price of these goods. Why I want to know, I will let you know in a short while. Just pay attention. Suppose list price is 90,000 and I want to know its wholesale price. I'm talking about wholesale price and list price. So, I will look here, wholesale price and list price. I will see their difference that is 20 by 200, 1 by 10. And I told you that if this rate will be implied or applied, should I say, on list price, then list price will come back to wholesale price. Correct? So, if I apply rate of 1 by 10 to this item, this is at list price, I will come to know about the margin that is 9000 and the balance will tell me the wholesale price. Now you need to think it this way. Sold out. You have sent to branch 90,000 worth of goods at invoice price. Now you have just got it that out of 90,000, 81,000 worth of goods have been sold by branch. That's a different matter that branch has sold these goods at a list price of 90,000. That means stock remaining with the branch is 9,000. That means branch failed to sell 9,000 worth of goods. So whatever goods you sold, you have included their profit margin 40,000 in your trading and profit and loss account. 
But because out of 90,000, 9,000 worth of goods have remained unsold, so that is the reason profit margin will have to be reduced. So now we have come to know that closing stock with the branch is 9,000. And this is the only area which we need to pay attention to. So now we have realized that this 40,000 worth of goods, 40,000 worth of profit is not fully realized. So, in order to bring it to the proper level, what I am going to do now, I am going to write here, unrealized profit, unrealized profit, unrealized profit means profit which could not be realized because some of the stock, some of the goods remained unsold. 9,000 worth of goods having a wholesale price have remained unsold. So what is the profit element in it? This is at wholesale price. You want to know the cost. So 9,000. So margin is 4,000. So that means out of 40,000 worth of profit, 4,000 worth of profit is not realized. So that is the reason now I will say that my net profit is not 1,60,000, rather 1,56,000. So 1,56,000 will be my net profit. This is how you have to do these questions. Are you getting my point or not? Besides these two working, question may also ask you to prepare branch office trading and profit and loss account, which is a mere formality, honestly speaking, branch office trading and profit and loss account. Branch office trading and profit and loss account. Suppose question asks you to pay branch office profit and loss account, then You can frame it, it's not a big problem. See here. Now consider yourself as the branch. Trading and profit and loss account, I have already told you, is always prepared at cost price. But what is the cost from the perspective of the branch? Branch receives the goods at wholesale price. So that is that is the cost from the perspective of the branch. Correct? So that is the reason. I will write here first of all opening stock but there is no opening stock with the branch. No question of any purchases because generally branches are not allowed to purchase. Goods sent to branch. You have sent the goods to the branch and branch will receive. You have sent 90,000 worth of goods to branch. So you will write here 90,000. This is wholesale price but wholesale price is the cost price for branch. Now you will write the sales. Remember one thing branch does the sale at list price. So, total sales by branch is 90,000. And we have just computed the closing stock with the branch. Closing stock with the branch through working note, we have just found out 9,000. So, we can say profit earned by branch, if you want to show separately, gross profit is equal to 9,000. Because, it can be clearly seen from here also. Whatever goods you send to branch, that is 90,000 wholesale priced goods. Out of those 90,000 worth of goods, branch has sold out 81,000 worth of goods for 90,000. So 9,000 is the profit earned by branch. We can also see it from there. And then I will write here gross profit brought down that is 9,000. No expenses in the column of the branches given. Had there been, then I would have written here. So your net profit will also be 9,000. So if the question asks to prepare your branch trading and profit and loss account, you can prepare it quite easily. I hope you have been able to understand this particular question. Now, correct? If you have noted it down, have you noted it down? Quickly, I can do another question for you then. Okay, I will try to do one more question. Let me rub it out. I want to use the same formations. Just allow me four or five minutes. because otherwise it will consume some time.
correct and i might use these rates also So at least still up to this point, it's fine. So now we take up question number 4.2 on similar lines. Just to make you understand better. A, a limited company has its branch office at City X. Goods are sold to customer at cost plus 100%. So your list price will be 200. Whereas head office sends the goods to branch at wholesale price of cost plus 80%. So same rates are there. Correct. Even in 4.2, you will have the same rates. This is 4.2 now. Head office sends the goods at cost plus 80%, 180. Everything will be same. Same rates will be framed. Correct. Now we can come straight away to the question. Question says that stock in the beginning is 25,000. Well, first I write opening stock. In the head office books, Opening stock is 25,000. So we write here 25,000. No problem. Then question says, Purchases are 1,50,000. So I will write here, Purchases 1,50,000. Purchases 1,50,000. Then we have been given, Goods sent to branch at invoice price. Goods sent to branch at invoice price. Obviously, head office will always send the goods at invoice price, which is 54,000 given to you. You will write towards the credit side under sales, 54,000. Then you have been given sales, 1,53,000. However, here it is given Head office sells the goods to the customer at wholesale price. So head office is selling the goods once again at wholesale price. Branch will always sell the goods at list price. So sales again, when sales is equal to 1,53,000 and again it is at wholesale price, 1,53,000. So the first thing is that we need to find out the closing stock, correct? In order to find out the closing stock, I will write opening stock. With the branch is 25,000. And then purchases. What was the amount of purchases? Purchases 4.2. Purchases amount is 1,50,000. 1,50,000. is amount of purchase. So that means total goods available with the head office is equal to 1,75,000. This is the cost price of the total worth of goods available with the head office. And we have just seen that head office has sent 54,000 worth of goods at wholesale price. So I want to know their cost price. I will take the rate of 4 by 9. And if I will take the rate of 4 by 9, what will be it? Well, what will be the margin? 54,000 into 4 divided by 9 is equal to 24,000. That means in 54,000, 24,000 is the margin. So your cost price will be equal to 30,000. So out of 1,75,000 worth of goods costing, 30,000 worth of goods costing have been sent out, of course, at 54,000. That's a different matter. So 30,000 worth of goods have been sent out. Similarly, in this question, 1,53,000 is the worth of sales. 1,53,000 is the sales, but sales again are at wholesale price. So again, you will have to bring it to the cost price. 1,53,000 into 4 divided by 9. 68,000 is the margin included in it. So what is the cost? 1,53,000. 153 minus 68 that is equal to 85,000. So 85,000 worth of goods costing were sold by head office to the customer at 153,000. 
So now we can easily find out the closing stock. So from 1,75,000 worth of goods, we have sent 30,000 worth of goods, of course having a cost of 30,000, and we have sold 85,000 worth of goods. So we are left off with 60,000. So closing stock with head office is equal to 60,000. So you have been able to find out the closing stock with the head office. You will write closing stock 60,000. You can take the difference 54,000 54,000 plus 153 plus 60 minus 175. Your gross profit is 92,000. And if you will look very closely, this gross profit comprises of margin. What is the margin included in 54,000 that is 24 and 68. So 24,000 is the margin or profit on goods which we have sent and 68,000 worth of margin is there on goods which we have sold out. That with this gross profit 92,000 comprises of this margin. So we bring out this gross profit here and we know that out of this 24,000 cannot be concretely termed as realized profit. However, 60,000 worth of profit can be concretely said as realized because these are against the sales which have been done by head office. Correct? So, now the next point here is we want to know whether there is closing stock with the branch or not. Whether there is closing stock with the branch or not, we want to know that. So, in order to find out whether there is closing stock with the branch or not, what we are supposed to do, just a moment actually I told you the methodology. First, you look into the column of the branch. First, you look into the column of the branch. In the column of the branch, it is given that branch has sold, sold goods worth rupees 50,000 and this is the list price of those goods. However, first of all, we need to know actually, the amount of goods which we have sent, 54,000 worth of goods we have sent to the, what we call branch, having a wholesale price. In fact, we need not require to write cost price of these goods. We can simply go ahead with that. Now, the point is to, point which we need to note is that 54,000 worth of goods we sent to branch. Out of these, what amount of goods have been sold by branches? Branch, first you consider the what we call sale of the branch list because this is the list price. So, branch has incurred a sale of 50,000 but at list price. In order to convert list price into what we call wholesale price, I will apply the rate 1 by 10. So, 5,000 will be rate and now easily I can find out that this is the wholesale price of these goods. That means branch has sold out 45,000 worth of wholesale priced goods at list price of 50,000. So because now you know that branch has sold out out of 54,000, 45,000 worth of goods, that's a different matter. These goods have been sold at list price of 50,000. But significantly for us, out of 54,000, 45,000 worth of goods have been sold. So 9,000 have remained unsold and similar to the last one, even in this question, we will see that unrealized profit will be equal to 9,000 because now we come to know that 9,000 worth of goods have remained unsold. So into 4 by 9, I want to know what is the profit included in it. Once again, it is equal to 4,000. So once again, your net profit will be equal to 88,000. 92 minus 4. Correct? And... Similarly, you can prepare the branch trading and profit or loss account. There is no opening stock. Goods sent to branch, you will have to write 54,000, sorry, 50,000 or whatever it is. Let me check it off. Just give me one minute. Right. So, goods sent to branch here in this particular question were 54,000, sorry. So, I will write here 54. And sales at list price is 50,000. We have already computed closing stock that is 9,000. 
we have already seen in fact i need not require to compute gross profit also we can see here that branch has sold 45000 worth of goods at 50000 so your gross profit must be equal to 5000 or you can simply balance it to find out. 59 minus 54 will also give you 5,000. So gross profit 5,000. No expenses are there. Your net profit will also be 5,000. This is how you will have to do this particular question. Is it clear to you? Then 4.3, you must try. You give it a try by yourself. In 4.3, it is written that head office sends the goods to branch at 20% less than the list price, which is cost plus 100%. So similar to the last question uh, here your list price will be 200 no doubt about that 100 plus 100 percent and goods are being sent at 20 percent less than the list price so your wholesale price this time will be 200 minus 20 percent that will be equal to 160 correct so you can do this question and rest of the things are similar to the last one with only difference is that sales is at list price so what impact it will bring into the question? Because this time head office is selling the goods at list price. It is clearly written sales at list price. That means both are selling the goods at list price. The impact which it will make is that when you, when you are going to compute the closing stock, see here, when we are going to compute the closing stock, so when I will write the amount of sales, I need to understand that this item is at list price. I want to bring it to the cost price. So accordingly, you will apply the rate to find out its cost. Correct? So that is the only difference which it will make in the question. 4.4, uh, I will do it for you. Although you can manage this question of your own, 4.4 is not difficult. And in, from the recent examination, we have picked up this particular question, 4.5. Even this question is manageable. But anyway, in the next session, we'll finish up this session to finish up this particular section also. So till then, it's time to say goodbye and of course, good night.